Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today, I'm going to go and interview someone uh, called Douglas Carswell, who is UKIP's sole MP. Uh, he used to be a Conservative MP, but defected last year, caused a bit of a stir as he did so. Now, I strongly oppose UKIP, but Douglas Carswell's interesting because he's a very thoughtful guy. He's a bit of an intellectual, uh, and I think, you know, we're going to probably disagree quite passionately over lots of issues, probably have a bit of a knockabout, but we might even have some common ground. Before who do you want to be Labour leader, by the way? Who do I want to be Labour yeah. leader? Well, I'm supporting Jeremy Corbyn because yeah. he's putting Me too, on, me too. He's putting on the, for Jez. But he's putting on the agenda issues, which I think are important, which yeah. is a genuine living wage without in-work benefits. I want for. Jeremy Corbyn. But do you know what? And this is what, I want to see what you think I about this. I want Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn, in the 1980s, he made a number of stances which were seen as very unpopular. He opposed apartheid whilst Margaret Thatcher was saying the ANC were terrorists. He marched... Uh, he wasn't the only one opposing the apartheid. Let, let me, fin let me finish. He marched party. against Saddam Hussein when our government was, was arming Saddam Hussein. He marched for LGBT rights when that was seen as a loony left thing to do. He said that the government should talk to Sinn Féin when that was seen as an extreme thing to do. He was the basis of Northern Ireland police process. He was pretty right on all those things, surely. In on, hindsight. On, on, on one of the reasons why the world is, is, is better is precisely because, you know, social attitudes have changed to difference and that's wonderful. The NHS, do you agree with... I'm in favour. Well, Paul Nuttall, he's the de obviously deputy leader, he thinks the very existence of the NHS divers competition, he said that. Nigel Farage thinks it should be replaced with a public insurance model. Yeah, come on. I have to say, I'm a bit surprised. You're digging up stuff no, it's about what from, you've from, from, from months ago. Well, have they changed? He surely still believes in it, unless he's just yeah. flipping, flip-flopping around. You UKIP, UKIP fought an election where our healthcare policy was trusted more than any other party's policy. And I would suggest one of the reasons why we ate into the Labour vote so effectively is precisely because we are seen as being credible on the NHS. But this strikes me as a contradiction in the heart of your thinking, because you're someone, you've made a very passionate case for the free market and the role of the free market. Why, why is the NHS exempt? Why not just have a free market in healthcare provision? You need the NHS for lots of reasons. One of the reasons why you need it is because there are some things that I think are probably best that are not provided um, by um, big corporate suppliers. How much private sector involvement would you have within the NHS? That's really a question for Labour Party leaders to contend with. You, you've got with the UK's policy. How much should the private sector have a role if in the provision of healthcare? I, I wouldn't rule it out completely. It just seems odd that we have this big state organisation. Who's the one who believes in the free market? So why? No, it's, it's intellectually so why very. Not? It's intellectually very coherent to say that the state should fund things and the state should pay for things. But you can have, in some cases, private contractors providing that service. The, the state doesn't have to produce and, and supply everything. If you want to be purist about this, great, you'll get a cheer on Twitter, but you won't get many votes in swing seats. You used to be a Conservative MP, that's how you were first elected, you obviously defected to UK. I got to the stage where I thought I'd rather not be in politics than carry on. When was that? Summer, summer last year. Why? I no longer believe in my old party and I no longer believe that the people in charge of it want change and want the change that I think this country desperately needs. Are you a small c conservative still or a libertarian? I'm a libertarian. I used to think of myself as conservative with a big c and a small c. Obviously I, I left the conservative party so I'm not a big c conservative. As a libertarian I may have, I may have dumped the conservative bit but I'm, I'm very pro the free market. How do you sum up David Cameron? A patrician, very, very bright, patrician conservative who is the repository of every failed orthodoxy of the age. Oh, ouch. <laughs> um, what comes across with you? You want this grassroots libertarian movement on the right, and the UK, it's basically, it's a personality call. It's not a grassroots movement. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. We have more than 50,000 members. I, I think we need to look seriously at how we can change that by harnessing the internet. We haven't really discovered how, how to do that. I think the strongest thing we need to go on is political reform, changing changing the way that the people in the building behind preside over us. We need, I think, to go on the, the idea of real far-reaching democratic reform in this country. 20 years, Nigel Farage has suggested that he wants to, to stay I, in. I think he may have been a little tongue-in-cheek, but the serious point is this. I don't want to be leader, and I don't want anyone ever. other than Nigel. So you never, leader. ever no. want to be leader? Absolutely. So you'd be happy, if he was leader for 20 years, that'd be fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be leader, 
and but would it, would I, don't okay want, for him I don't want anyone else to be leader. I, I'm, I'm very happy with him being leader. Tax. Um, UKIP wants to raise the personal allowance to £13,500 uh, and introduce a, a 35p rate of tax as well. Um, now, the Resolution Foundation did the maths on this. They worked out the poorest 10% would get £35 a year extra, the second poorest would get £74 a year extra, the 10th richest, uh, so people right at the top of uh, the top 10% of society, uh, they would get £1,143 extra a year. So are you going to find it difficult? Because you're going to personally benefit from this budget. You're going to get extra money in your pocket. Oh, most of my constituents will benefit from Well, budget. no, actually. No, they will. I'm the afraid, ac ac duty. according to the yeah. Institute for Fiscal Studies, yeah. but millions, millions of low-paid workers the IFS, are going to be worse telling, off. Yeah. I, I, you, you, millions. You, you refer to the IFS as the, sort of the high priests of economics. In real terms, those families are going to be worse off. That's what they, and the, your constituents are going to be worse no, off. You keep saying that. I, I don't agree with you, Owen. You I don't agree with them, you don't I, agree I with the experts. I, not I, me, you ignore me. The, 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 the experts who didn't see the gaping fiscal hole. It, you, know, <laughs> the, you, you put so much faith and confidence in experts, and yet these are the same experts who failed okay. to see the mess that we're in when it was being made. If it does turn out that large numbers of low-paid workers in your constituency are worse off, will you regret voting for a budget which drives low-paid workers in your constituents further into poverty. If I thought this budget would do what you said, Owen, I wouldn't approve of it. But I think, like on many things, you're wrong. Do you need that money? I think people, you and I and everyone around us, is wiser at spending the money that they've earned than George Osborne. Why, Owen, for a socialist, why are you so keen on giving George Osborne more control over your life? No, I just on. want more money spent on things which actually But it will be spent people. by people like George Osborne. Yeah. I think that my constituents need to be allowed to keep more of their money. It is a morally better society that allows them to keep more of their money. And if the left wants to take a holiday from history and go down the socialist route, great. No, that no, is no, no, the no. chance. Saying, that I'm, is the chance for my I'm party saying, to displace yours. I'm saying your constituents aren't on £68,000 a year. So yes, of course, they're low paid workers. Of course, they need extra money. But their in work support is being taken away while people like you at the moment are benefiting. I'm surprised that you're kind of personalising this so much, but if you want to carry on okay, intro on that basis... Me. Why don't you write out a cheque now and we'll pop it around to the Treasury? There's nothing to stop you paying more of your income if you want to. Come, that would be really moral, Owen. How much, how much, do you, how much oh, more are you volunteering to give? I want people who... Are, how much more are you volunteering I, I want to pay more tax. How much... Okay. I want everybody Let's to pay more tax. Let's do that now. No, 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 no. Come on. Because no, no, this no, is no, the point. Let me explain. Let me explain. In the 19th century... Nothing's stopping you. Let's go In the 19th century... The Treasury does take... The Treasury will take your check. Let's go In the 19th century... Come on, let's go. Let me tell... Let me finish. Come on, Douglas. In the 19th century, we had a system of Victorian philanthropy which depended on rich people doling out money at a whim. And this was what Clement Attlee's government tried to get rid of. Because they said, and so Francis Beckett's biographer of Clement Attlee said I'm this. I'm familiar with Clement If a rich man wants to, if the rich man wants to, uh, wants to help the poor, he should pay his taxes gladly, not dole out money at a whim. Now, if we have a collective system, that's the point. And you talked about collectivism before. So you want my constituents where you tax, to pay more? No, no, no. I want low-paid workers to have support. This is the problem, because in your constituency, their support's been taken away, whilst people like yourself are benefiting. Look at the National Health Service. Look at the education system. I'm comprehensive educated. I owe everything uh, to comprehensive education. You depend on people who've been trained up by the education system. We depend on law and order. We depend on banks which have been bailed out by the taxpayer. We all depend on the state, so we all have to pay something back. And that's the point, isn't it? It's not about, you know, uh, I'm confiscating I'm an money. I'm not an anarchist, uh, Owen. Sometimes you talk to me as if you think that I, I am an anarchist. I, I'm I don't think an you're anarchist. an anarchist, but do you think, like me... Very that, rarely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's the truth. Uh, that tax is important to put, fund public services and that you should pay according to your ability to pay taxes. Simple, straightforward. Vote. I think, Principal. some. of course, you need some level of tax and you need some level of public service provision. But I tend to think the reason why the world has got so much better is because more and more things we can run for ourselves rather than having to depend on small elites to make the decisions for us. And what you're essentially arguing for is a model that would re-empower the sort of uh, government elites um, whom I think uh, are the last people we should be putting in charge no, of. I just think people should uh, be taxed according to their wealth and we should use that to fund the public services we all depend on as a society. I know, basic principle. I, I, I know you're a staunch socialist and I, I admire that and, and, I, I, and I, hope, I, hope that, I hope that the Labour Party listens to you and I hope Jeremy Corbyn uh, triumphs and um, I hope that the Labour Party goes for this no holds barred well, I'm radical a, socialism. I'm just applying the same principles as you. You want the National Health Service run by the public publicly funded, taxed, uh, taxes to be collected properly uh, to fund that NHS. That's just the principle I believe in. Owen, it's been a great pleasure. Yeah. <laughs>
So that interview kind of showed what I kind of already thought about Douglas Carswell, that he's not a demagogue like Nigel Farage. He's a bit of an intellectual in his own way. He's got an ideology, a coherent ideology. I don't really, uh, I'm not very sympathetic about it. But it was really interesting, uh, thoughtful, I thought. Uh, it was a bit passionate, a bit of a knockabout, as I thought it would be. Uh, but we're going to do lots more interviews, so let me know who you think I should interview, what are the sorts of topics we should be chatting about. Keep leaving your comments, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.